Good morning, everybody. At the outset, let me thank the organizers of this conference at Taylor's University for inviting me to be one of the plenary speaker for the first international conference of medical goats public on the theme COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and I must also thank uh, for giving a very good introduction of mine to the audience. Uh, my topic is case finding and contact tracing of COVID-19. We all have witnessed the um, pandemic of COVID-19 and we all together are battling to conquer the pandemic of COVID-19 since last one year. And yes, to some extent, we are very successful in uh, winning the race in terms of declining the trend of cases as well as the dates, which are evident practically in most of the parts of the world. However, the pandemic is still persistent. Um, we here, as far as case detection is concerned, let me tell you that this is the most important case detection contract tracing is the most important strategy we have adopted in order to contain this particular pandemic across the, go across the globe. Whatever may be the type of transmission, maybe it is a clustering of cases or maybe it is a community participation, but the strong implementation of case finding and contact tracing strategy has worked um, immensely in order to decline this particular trend of cases as well as diseases. COVID-19 pandemic has also highlighted the importance of case finding and contact tracing strategy to address such type of issues if they happen to come even in the future. Now let's briefly talk about this particular topic which is going to retain its importance on the face of declining trend of the disease. We all medical professionals usually are well versed with the term what is case finding and contact tracing. But it is equally true that uh, the other students as well as the paramedical staff as well as uh, the students paramedical staffs, as well as any other layman person, they also should be well versed with these terminologies. And I have tried my level best to simplify the topic so that it is understood well by all of them. The attempt case finding and contract tracing ultimately aims to wipe up the park rather than controlling the fire which is set by this particular uh, spark. Now, first and most important, when we come to this topic, first and most important, what is the public health concern as far as COVID-19 pandemic is concerned? We all know that it is caused by novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2. The important aspect is that the high infectivity, even though pathogenesis is low and low virulence. Now this high infectivity is the one which is responsible for very high potential for a very rapid spread of this disease. Along with that, we do come across large number of asymptomatic cases. And these asymptomatic cases are the one who are responsible for keeping the pool of transmission of this disease. Major transmission of course is by droplets and the fomites. These droplets, this is airborne infection as well as the fomite borne infection. And we know that we cannot choose the air we breathe. And hence, the control measures are also going to be equally difficult. The cases are seen across the globe in some of the countries in the form of clustering of cases. In some of the countries, it is it has even taken up one stage ahead, that is up to community transmission level. Very drastic preventive measures like lockdown incurs lot of socio-economic consequences for which there is a cry all over the world. However, it is equally important that it can be prevented by uh, if people observe the strict COVID discipline which 
uh, once again highlights the importance of proper use of masks, hand hygiene practices and social distancing protocols. Now coming to our core topic, case finding. Remember that when we say case finding, that means we need to identify the cases as per our protocol to whom you could consider the suspect of COVID-19, to whom you are going to consider as a probable case of COVID-19 and to whom you are going to consider a confirmed case of COVID-19. Now suspect, whoever is identified as a suspect needs to be subsequently investigated to either um, decide whether it retains the probable case form or it is going to be confirmed. Now suspect is a person with acute respiratory illness of any degree of severity who within 14 days before the onset of illness had any one of the following exposures that is history of travel to foreign countries. Now a history of travel to foreign countries was something which we used to talk a lot when the pandemic began. In between there were no flights and once again now the flights have started. So even this condition becomes equally important when it comes to apply at present times. Then close physical contact with a confirmed case of novel coronavirus infection while that patient was symptomatic or exposed at healthcare facility where COVID-19 patients are treated. We must get familiar with the term SARI because SARI are the patients which are seen very often, especially in a tertiary and secondary level hospitals. Now SARI stands for acute, severe acute respiratory infection. This is an acute respiratory infection with history of fever more than 38 degrees centigrade and cup. Onset is usually within 10 days. Important thing is that these patients require hospitalization and the absence of an alternative diagnosis that fully explains this clinical presentations, we must suspect COVID-19 amongst these patients. Whenever this is a similar type of presentation, but when the patient does not require hospitalization, we call it as ILI, that is influenza-like illnesses. This is nothing but acute respiratory infection where uh, with fever which is going to be either 38 degrees centigrade or more and cup with onset within past 10 days. So these SARI patients, influenza like illnesses patients and the definitions which I have described earlier, uh, they are to be identified as suspects of COVID-19. Now this suspect, whoever is the suspect, we advise them to undergo investigations and a suspect from whom testing for COVID-19 virus is inconclusive or testing could not be performed for some or the other reason, they are to be considered as probable case. Now, where the viral load is less, it is likely that the test result, RT-PCR test result comes inconclusive and if the microbiology department describes the result as inconclusive, that becomes a probable case. However, even this case ideally should be handled as if it is a confirmed case for the purpose of management. Of course, the confirmed case is the one where the person with laboratory confirmation of COVID-19 infection irrespective of clinical signs and symptoms. That means somebody who absolutely has no symptoms, no signs and if he happens to undergo RT-PCR test and is found to be COVID positive, it is considered as a confirmed test. Community transmission is the term which sometimes used in this particular description when we talk about case finding and contact tracing. It simply means uh, <coughs> to have, uh, it is community transmission usually applies when we say um, that the transmission have occurred when people have been infected without any knowledge of contact with someone who has the disease or who is COVID-19 positive. Um, 
then what what are we going to do as far as case finding is concerned we usually adopt the strategy of active case finding and passive case finding active case finding is that when we are on the lookout for the cases actively which usually holds true when we go to the containment areas and passive case finding is when we are on the lookout for the cases who otherwise report on themselves to the hospital maybe in the opds or maybe in the form of sari or maybe in the form of influenza like illnesses so in that case how should we go ahead to confirm now all symptomatic individuals who have undertaken international travel in the last 14 days which used to be true when the pandemic began which also holds true when the flights have started so they need to be examined by rt pcr all symptomatic contacts of a laboratory confirmed case even they, they also deserve the attention all symptomatic healthcare workers who handle the cases of covid-19 all hospitalized patients with severe acute respiratory illness that is sari asymptomatic direct and high risk contacts of a confirmed case should be tested once between 5 and 5 day and on 14th day of coming in its or her contact so all those who are asymptomatic and who are identified as a high risk contacts ideally they should undergo the rt pcr testing at the end of 5 day and at the end of 14th day and in hot spots or in hot uh, hot spot clusters or in large migration gatherings and evacuation centers even they also active case finding is deserved in these types of situation to find out the cases or the asymptomatic cases of covid-19 of course all sympt- symptomatic influenza like illnesses patients have to be subjected for rt pcr testing to confirm the diagnosis to identify the confirmed cases so to whomsoever you suspect you have to follow this basic protocol to subject them subsequently for testing to identify the confirmed cases now as far as case finding is concerned we are going to identify whether the patient is suspect subsequently whether he becomes either probable or confirmed case beyond that once the case is identified the most important next stage towards containment it's contact tracing now contact tracing means identification of contacts of covid-19 confirmed case confirmed cases where the swab examination is positive for coronavirus to place them in quarantine for next 14 days either in their home or at designated quarantine covid care centers to keep them under observation for development of covid specific symptoms and signs and prevent exposures to others non infected so far so as to break the chain of transmission that means selectively actively we are going to identify those who are the contacts of confirmed case of covid 19 and our job is to correctly identify them and follow subsequent protocol now what purpose this contact tracing exercise really serves it is very helpful to interrupt the ongoing transmission and reduce spread of an infection so once the contact is identified you are going to impose certain restrictions on those contacts in the form of quarantine protocol and subsequently it is going to lead to the reduction in the spread of infection by interrupting the chain of transmission to alert the contacts to be the possibility of infection and other preventive counseling and prophylactic care so to whom so ever we identify contacts we advise them preventive we give them preventive counseling and if the protocol exists in the individual country you can give some prophylactic care like um, hcq chemo prophylaxis to offer diagnosis and counseling and treatment to already infected individuals and to learn about the epidemiology of a disease in a particular population now this contact tracing exercise this contact tracing word has become very famous on the face of covid-19 pandemic however this strategy was also existing um, for control of sexually transmitted infections tuberculosis smallpox also 
So what does contact tracing? What are going to be the steps of contact tracing? So if you are going to be on the lookout for contacts, the first and most important thing is contact identification in relation to index case. So to whomsoever you identify as a confirmed case, that becomes the index case to be on the lookout for other contacts. Then contacts to whomsoever you identify as a contact, you need to interview that person very thoroughly to confirm, yes, he needs to be declared as a contact. Then contact listing in the form of those who are at high risk as well as those who are at low risk. And once the contacts are, all the contacts are identified either in the form of high and low risk, you need to manage them. And this management can be the institutional, uh, in the institutional quarantine facilities or it can be home quarantine also. So contact identification, contact interview, contact listings and subsequent contact management. They are the basic steps and logical steps for managing the contacts of COVID-19 individuals. We have used the terms high risk versus low risk contacts. So what this high risk contact means and what low risk contacts means. High risk contacts are those where who stay in the same household when we talk in terms of the facilities like a college or etc then those who share the same hostel room those who are exposed to covid positive patients secretion or touch the patients without personal protective equipments which is also positive somebody happens to meet with an accident and some people have gathered together to take that patient to, to the hospital and subsequently we come to know that the one to whom we have given the service is COVID positive. Then physical examination of COVID positive patients without PPE, unknowingly this used to happen in the past. Over a period of time, we are hardly getting any patients on this uh, criteria. The one who has provided direct care to the patient without PPE, that is personal protective equipments, which usually holds true at the time of shifting the patient or dead body or assistant, assisting the patient without knowing the, its COVID status. Either touched or cleaned the Ill, linens, clothes or dishes of the confirmed patient, usually the mortuary staff. Whenever you happen to be in close proximity of positive patients for more than 15 minutes continuously, and the passengers in close proximity during the conveyance for more than six hours in past 14 days who later tested positive. Sometimes you will not, suppose if you are going to travel by the bus or the train, the one who is sitting next to you, you may not be aware whether that patient is COVID positive or no. But subsequently, if he comes to, if you come to know that he was COVID positive and if you have traveled together for more than six hours and uh, with a distance between two less than one meter, then that also needs to be identified as a high risk contact in terms of likelihood of becoming positive. Now, excluding these situations, other contacts are to be considered as low risk contacts. That means shared the same room or the space and not having high risk exposure. Suppose you are in the classroom and the classroom is shared by 20 people and the one who was subsequently declared positive was at one corner and you were sitting at the another corner, it becomes the low risk exposure. Travelled in the same environment, yes, in the same bus, but the positive person was sitting on the front side, you were on the rear side, yes, and staying in the same building or in the same floor of your building. So they are to be cons considered as low risk contacts. Remember that as far as contact management is concerned, the management remains same for high risks as well as low risk contacts. Okay. Okay. In terms of subsequently, subsequent follow-up of quarantine protocol and subsequent follow-up RT-PCR examinations. Now, whenever you identify anybody as a contact, what next needs to be done. If your contact is symptomatic, subject him for testing immediately. 
If the test is positive, naturally the individual is going to get isolated in COVID facilities and subsequently isolation management, all the formalities will come into picture. If your contact has absolutely no symptoms, then you have a scope to opt for home quarantine for subsequent 14 days. If no symptoms during those 14 days of quarantine period, one swab during any day between 5th and 14th day will do. And if that swab comes positive, let the patient complete 14 days and the patient can be discharged or patient can be released from the quarantine protocol. If the patient becomes symptomatic during contact period, during quarantine period, then he needs immediate testing and based on the results of the testing, you need to initiate the further line of action. This is what, so to whomsoever you identify as a contact, maybe high risk or low risk, this becomes the subsequent follow-up for that patient. Now always remember that in the field, there are many people who are on the lookout for contacts that is contact tracings, especially this holds true, especially in case of frontline workers in the country, India, our frontline workers are ASHA workers, Anganwadi workers, ANM workers, this may be different in other countries, but for, con for frontline workers, whenever they happen to go for contact tracing, there are certain advisories they are supposed to follow in order to safeguard their health and say other safety precautions. So these individual frontline workers who are going to be on the lookout for contact tracings, they should observe strictly the social distancing and interview either, whenever it comes to interviewing the person, they should either interview the person outdoors or in a well ventilated space. Triple layer mask is compulsory. Mask to the respondent, if this respondent is symptomatic, is also advisable. It is equally important to maintain other infection prevention control measures and the frontline worker should not work if he himself becomes symptomatic. So because this contact tracing is an active exercise, you need to interact a lot of people to confirm the contacts and to give them preventive counselling and that, it, that may expose the frontline workers to COVID-19. So it is equally important that we are very careful about putting these particular staff to the work. Okay? So when it comes to contact tracing in the clusters, that is in the area, in the big area, in the group, what needs to be done? If there is a clustering of cases, the whole area will be put under containment plan. Identify where there is an index case, identify those who are exposed to that, identify the nearby areas and observe that area as a containment area and containment measures are to be initiated here. In this containment area, a house-to-house -house search for the symptomatics by the frontline worker is must and suspects are to be sent to COVID facilities. Maybe it is COVID care center or dedicated COVID hospital, wherever the facilities, institutional quarantine facilities exist. The case search in containment area ideally has to be continued for 14 days after the last confirmed case in that area and all the residents of the containment area will be motivated for immediate self-reporting if any one of the family member developed COVID-19 specific symptoms. So we do emphasize on the active role of the people even for case detection and subsequent identification to strengthen the identification of contacts for this purpose. I've just giving you one example of how the things happen. This is the month-wise distribution of isolated and quarantined healthcare workers. This was the exercise what we did at KEM hospital at my parent institute in Mumbai, okay, where we used to very meticulously do the case finding and the contact tracing exercise, especially amongst the healthcare workers in the hospital premises. So initially when we started this exercise in the month of April 2020, we identified almost 586 contacts for 39 patients. So you can imagine what was the ratio of 
uh, individuals or contacts for one index case. And subsequently, when these measures were met very strong contact tracing and ob strict observance of quarantine protocol, when the things were met very strong, Subsequently, in this graph also, you will find that the number of individuals quarantined per exposure, per positive confirmed case have reduced significantly. And that's the success of entire contact tracing measure. So ultimately, when it comes to measuring the success of this particular exercise, you must go by this particular criteria. Now, contact tracing, of course, has many issues. Number one is correctly identifying the time of exposure. Usually, we say that if somebody is, is to be identified as contact and if you are going to advise him the quarantine for next 14 days, that has to be from the time of exposure. Now, it becomes very difficult to identify the time of exposure. Usually what we do that when the patient comes positive by RT-PCR, from there onwards we say that patient exposed and subsequently for next 14 days we advise quarantine. But exactly on which day the patient was exposed to the infection which subsequently has led to positive RT-PCR status, we do not know many times. Now, period 7 days versus 14 days. Now, when, it, when we go to the containment area, the criteria is very strict. It is for 14 days. But when this protocol is to be implemented in an organized sector, in the office staff, in the hospital setup, there is always a dilemma how long the patient is to be kept under observation in the quarantine protocol, whether 7 days are enough or 14 days are enough. Here in the hospital setup, in order to take care of the human resource available for management of the patients, sometimes we opt for seven days quarantine, taking granted that maybe the person was exposed much before that. Follow-up swab examination, whether it is to be done at the end of five days, it, is, uh, it needs to be done at the, age, at the end of 10 days or 14 days. Again, many times we face a dilemma about it. Some people even advise, do it immediately and put the person to the work. So this needs to be clarified still further. Facility versus home quarantine to be given a choice or no. Now initially we used to make it very compulsory the institutional quarantine uh, and institutional admissions but subsequently when the number of patients started increasing we also had a dilemma whether you are going to ask for facility quarantine or you are going to opt for or adapt home quarantine. The level of positivity amongst contacts to consider effectiveness of contact tracing activity. That is also something which is not very clear. Suppose if you identify the contacts, uh, contacts, there is one index case and there are some 15-20 contacts are identified. How many of them subsequently are going to become positive, we really do not know. And we really do not know how to measure the success based on the number of positives we detect subsequently from those who are put to quarantine. So these are some of the issues usually we face whenever we go for contact tracing in containment areas as well as in a organized sector like the hospitals or other organizations. And uh, we need to sort out and all these issues need to be sorted out in the individual countries or in the individual areas, keeping in mind the availability of free month resource for the services and keeping in mind the, uh, uh, the epidemial or transmission level of this particular infections. Now, this was absolutely brief as far as the case finding and contact tracing is concerned. We ought to be, what we must understand over here is that this a very simple, simplified explanation should make it possible that everybody is now well versed with the basic things and they are in a position to at least suspect the case of COVID-19. And if at all they suspect, whoever are to be considered contacts, 
immediately before even the patient gets confirmed, the suspect gets confirmed. Before that also, the people should be motivated to observe the quarantine protocol. Thank you.